However big or small, our home should be a haven. There's a thousand jobs I need to do around the house. We just don't have the time. But it's not always easy keeping a house in order. It's such a shame we're not using the space. It is absolutely rammed full of stuff. But help is at hand. That's a fantastic piece of furniture. Look at this! A slug! That is solid. You can take back control of your home with clever, common-sense hacks. It's perfect. I love it. That don't bust the bank balance. And the best thing, you still got all of your storage. From this to this, that is just gleaming. That'll do nicely. Oh, my <laughs> God! We'll show you how you can make life-changing improvements in just one day. It's nice and clean for Mummy! Yay! I absolutely love it. I don't think it's ever looked that good before. <laughs> With better use and a spruce-up of your space. It's wonderful. I love it. You managed to do this in a day. This is absolutely brilliant. Are you getting me all tearing off? Our team of experts is here to help. The old tool belt's coming out. Well, That's how I know you're serious. Master builder Tommy Walsh brings over 50 years of DIY experience. Solid as a rock. Maxine Dwyer runs one of the UK's top extreme cleaning companies. That's what I mean by squeaky clean. And creative carpenter Asher Edwards prides himself on being a perfectionist. I am good. Just a little bit. Cheers. 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 <laughs> Cheers. Which household has sent a distress call today? Hi, my name is Liv. Uh, this is my dog, Pepsi, and we live in here for nearly three years now. Originally from Germany, music journalist and keen baker Olivia owns her one-bed flat in North London, which has to double as her home and office. I feel like I'm slightly restricted by the design of it. For example, here I'm in my living room slash kitchen, and as you can see, there's a lot of stuff standing around everywhere, because I feel like I don't really have storage. And there is one area that has to work extra hard for her. There is my workspace here, so I always work from home. And then underneath, there's the place where my dog normally lays around while I work. And then there are boxes right next to it for my side houses, less like a baking business. And just out and about and everyone can see it. Although she has an outdoor space, it's not in good condition. And from the kitchen and workout, living space, everything space, uh, you go onto the garden, the patio, uh, which is really big and really green. And not in a nice way, it's green because I didn't take care of the patio that much and the weather just made the wood go and turn green the same as the table. And I really need help with cleaning it because I've tried and it just doesn't work and now it's very, very slippery once it's raining. Which is putting her off making the most of the space. Like if friends come over or something, I always have to like try to explain, oh, sorry about this and sorry about that. I would like to be able to just have a lot of friends over just to hang out, have like a very nice environment to just relax, have a barbecue and like music and, and just enjoy the sun if it's there and just have a good time. It's the day of the big clean and fix. Good girl. With the team arriving shortly... Let's go. Olivia and her dog, Pepsi, head out to give them free reign. Well, it's a beautiful day. Let's hope it stays like that. Come on, this way. Off we go. To prove you can make a difference to your home in just one day and on a family-friendly budget. <laughs> yeah, she's got stuff in every corner by the look of it. <laughs> wow, it's a very busy small flat. It's lovely, but it's a bit compact. Compact. Yeah. Office, sofa, cooker, <laughs> washing machine. Yeah. There's a lot going on. It looks like she's got a dog as well. The dog bell's down there. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that means she's got a bit of outside space out there as well. Go on outside and I'm going to look at... <laughs> continue Come on, we'll have a look at you. What is this here? Oh, God, it's quite heavy. This is our office space, baking space, because there's no sideboards, and a dog space. Well, this is a nice sunny bit of space. It is. It's a nice small garden. It's just tired. Yeah. I, I wonder where else the dog sleeps. I'm going to go check out the rest of the place. The decking needs to be washed and cleaned, and all this timber work needs a bit of work on it, doesn't it? Yeah, I'm looking at this table. It's, it's definitely seen better days. We can do something, bring that back from the brink, if you like. Yeah, for real. There's lots of toys about all over the place. It needs a bit of organisation, all the toys just scattered everywhere. Yeah. This is the, the garden, by the look of it, of a very busy person who exactly. doesn't have the time to keep maintaining this place. Yeah, well, I've got my thinking out on, and I think we could possibly turn this around and make this into a, a nice space. You've always got your thinking out on. Does it ever come <laughs> up? That's the real question. Only when I get in the bath. <laughs> <laughs> With the problem areas identified, the team have their missions for the day. The multi-purpose working and baking area is crying out for a Maxine declutter and clean. The unloved and slippery courtyard is desperate for Tommy to revive and restore. And Asher needs to come up with a clever storage solution for the outside space. All this in one day and on a minimal budget. They need to get moving. The first job is to clear the clutter. That's just one of Tommy's worries. Well, I hope to do it all. In an ideal world, we'd have more time than, than we have for this. There's a bit of blue up there and a bit of dark cloud as well, so... As ever, we're in the hands of the gods. Do you want the snip saw set up? No, I'll use mine. Is this for your planters, yeah? Got a few lengths of these, going to cut them all up to size, make a little something something. You can always make a, a plant, a pyramid, if you like. I've only got one day, Tommy, <laughs> one day. I do apologise, cos I get carried away. With the average size of gardens in London 26% smaller than nationally, space is at a premium. Luckily, Asher has a simple plan to maximise Olivia's terrace. So it's a lovely garden, but it's small and compact, so there's no area for storage. So all the dog's toys, the hose, the little shovel, it's got nowhere to go. So what I'm thinking about is creating a nice little planter box where she can put away and hide all the bits and bobs that she don't need, especially the dog's toys, because that was overtaking the garden. And to add a bit of character, perhaps on top, I want to create a little planter section where she can actually plant herbs, flowers, whatever she fancies. Larger perennials like rosemary and sage are a great option for growing in a container. Keep the compost moist, but not soggy. The timber I'm going to use to put this together I brought it from the local DIY shop. And it's important just to read the label and make sure that it's suitable to be used outside. Certain timbers, like cedar or oak, have a superior natural rot resistance, so will last longer when exposed to the elements, which could be useful today. And it's just my luck, the rain is about to start as soon as I set up all my tools. Right, I need to get a gazebo out, cos... The rain don't stop me. <laughs> you need a lot more than a little bit of water to stop me. Gazebo! Maxine makes a start clearing the terrace whilst Tommy works on reviving the tyre table. Well, I'm pretty pleased with how this is turning out. I thought I'd have to give it um, a power wash, but then looking at it close up, I think the sander will work better. It will give it a key, and then once we put the uh, colour preservative on, it will soak right in and do the job it's supposed to do, which is preserve the timber and give it a longer life. And it will pretty it all up. It'll look really nice when it's done. Hi, Tommy. What do you think, though? Look, I did intend to power wash it, but I think it's going to come up better yeah. with a sander. I've used 
80 grit, which is quite coarse. Yeah. And I've used a coarse grit one. This is 80 grit. Yeah. Um, but that will cut and take all the, the, the dirt off. But you're not going to paint it. You're just going to stain it or preserve. Well, it's, it's a bit like a both. The process that we're going to use, yeah. we'll put a clear sealer on first. Yeah. And that will go preserve the wood and go into the wood and preserve it. Yeah. And then on the top of that, we'll put one of these nice trendy colours. So it will transform this piece of furniture yeah. Yeah. that looking at it here looks like it's ready for the skip. Yeah. But when you look at it here, yes. it looks like it's ready for the showroom. OK, I'm going to get back to the dog toys. <laughs> <laughs> Asher has taken shelter to start constructing his two storage planters. So I'm using glue and screws on this build. That is going to hold and keep this together and it will stand the test of time. This PVA glue here is weather resistant, so it's suitable for outdoors. I'm putting glue before I'm screwing. Now the screws are going to pull and squeeze they're straight nice and tight together so you would see the glue squeeze out once it comes to a close. So that pulls it nice and tight, acting like a vice to hold the two pieces together whilst the glue sets. And that is a nice, solid, sturdy way to secure two pieces of wood together. The glue will take around one hour to set and 24 hours to cure completely. At least the weather isn't getting in Asher's way. I love the gazebo. If you don't have a gazebo in your life, you're missing out. I can hardly see you with the steaming up of the goggles. That's an indication, of course, that our friend the weather has decided to make an appearance. Not the sunshine we was hoping for. Doesn't bode well. Tommy, Fingers crossed. are you yes. getting on with the rain? I bet to move it, move this underneath the balcony. Yeah. And hopefully I can continue sanding it so that at least we can get a sealer on it. A little bit of rain won't stop us. No, it won't. We'll persevere. As always. Right, I'm going to leave you to it. Let's see what we've got in this box. Inside, Maxine begins her sort through of Olivia's baking ingredients. First, checking the sell-by dates and then for duplicated purchases. It's very disorganised. And so here we have the space where I worked for the last three years, but underneath there's just literally no space for my legs because I have the boxes there. So I just have to be sitting there and without any space to actually work and like be comfortable to work at. Organising is always a good thing, I feel like. I personally can't do it, but once it's organised, I can stick to it. Two bicarbonates of soda, my favourite. And there's crispy onions. Oh, there's yeast. And I guess these are put here because she's got no cupboard space. So to have an organised kitchen makes it so much easier to keep cleaner. I thought to myself, she needs storage solution. So I've sourced this off the internet. A storage solution like this can be bought for under £15. I am going to push this table to about here. And this will wheel into the space. It's got some lovely nifty wheels. Look at this. Absolutely brilliant. The dried onions can go in this. Stackable airtight boxes like these lock out air and moisture, which would otherwise cause your food to spoil more quickly. Outside, Tommy's trying to bring back the original finish of the table legs. Right, you can see how the power washer is taking all that grime away, years of it and making it as good as new. And the added bonus, the sun's come out to play. So these should be dry in no time. It's important to select the correct setting on the power washer head as too fine a jet will remove the finish and even damage the wood itself. Maxine's off-the-shelf storage unit is finally assembled. Oh, 
pile of blanks. There you go. Good old dusting. Who down there in here that's probably been buried for so long? Make sure you sweep up around food preparation areas regularly, as anything left on the floor can attract mice, ants, and even cockroaches. It moves so freely and easy. It's on wheels. It slots in lovely. Hi, Max. Hey, Tommy. Hello, hey. my dear. Oh, that looks good. Look at so that. So this was the workstation with all the baking gear, wasn't it? Yep, 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 under here. Now look at this. Wow, very good. I'm impressed. Ah, 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 label, 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 label. Oh, that makes it a lot easier for her. Right, um, and when she's and working here, if she does look up there, that can inspire her to new baking, can't absolutely, it? Absolutely, yes, exactly. With floor space at a premium, the tall design of this storage unit maximises storage without taking up valuable room. Well, that's a real clever choice of storage because you could put shelves on here. This is a stud wall, but it's very complicated because you have to cut the plaster wall out and it just gets long-winded, complicated and can be expensive. Oh, okay. So that is the perfect solution. A good way to find out if yours is a stud wall or load-bearing is to give it a tap. Stud walls sound hollow and won't take a lot of weight. And I'm sure she's going to be over the moon with it. Lovely. Thank well done. You. And if you need a hand for anything, just give us a shout. Thanks, Tommy. Though the day is marching on, it's important not to cut corners. So now I'm doing the base with the same technique. So I'm using these three mil packers, and these are creating the perfect space in between each of these slats of timber, which allows the timber to shrink and expand over time. You don't want to have them too tight to each other or the timber won't breathe. Timber expands and contracts in any climate, but the more humid, the more it will swell. The packers go in between, creating the expansion gap needed between each piece. So I'm going to glue and screw it. Screws from underneath so you can't see the screws. Trim the top and then it just leaves the door for me to figure out and the top plant pot. Beautiful. Having cleaned the garden table, Tommy needs to create a working area to also bring the benches back to life. How comes you get all the fun jobs? You know what the answer to that is, it comes with age. Oh, it's, uh... As my dad would say, there's no point in getting older if you don't get wiser. <laughs> Right, now we're going to get this out and put it in the sun while I wash everything else down. Sure. So I don't know whether the best way might be to put her up on the fence. You hold it right there. I hold it this side. And I'll catch it. You go around the other side. I hope none of that water can fill in my tea. I wonder how many years it would take for me to get that knowledge, that so-called Tommy knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've got plenty of years to go. What's that, 50, 60, 70, 100? And now you're pushing it a bit now. <laughs> You'll be lucky to make next week if you keep being cheeky like that. You have to tell these boys, put them in their place. <laughs> yeah, there's a little bit I've got to do on the bottom. Jet washing wood should be done on a low pressure and shouldn't be used to clean certain woods like teak. Can I have a go, please? Of course you can. I love it. It looks then, brand new. Yeah, and if you wash it slowly, you'll, you'll see the transformation. OK, let me try. I'll do the tops, cos it's a bit tall for you, isn't it? Yes, it is. All right. I know I'm short, but whatever. Well, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> Vertically challenged, maybe. You better not say it. <laughs> <laughs> The furniture isn't the only woodwork in the garden that needs a clean. In the sun. Tommy's hoping to rescue Olivia's terrace from problem green algae. 
I also have a garden with a patio so the dog can go out and I can go out um, and I love it, really nice. The, the patio that's very slippery and green and I just can't get it clean. Now you can see what's happened to the decking where we've washed the bench and the, and the uh, table down. You can see here where the overspill from washing the benches has taken the algae off. Now, the thing about decking or paving is it can build up this green algae and that's very slippery and dangerous. Algae thrives on dark and damp timber, so regularly sweep debris from your decking and apply new sealant every couple of years to avoid water penetration. If I move my foot on here, it's very slippery, so you have to wash it down at least once every couple of months. Wash it down, hose it off, let it dry, job done, it's not difficult. And it saves any accidents where you can just slip over and go and if you come down, hit your head on it, leave you with a rather large headache. If you don't own a pressure washer like this, you can hire one for around £25 or simply scrub the decking with white vinegar or a specialist mould cleaner. And it's as simple as that. Just cold water and pressure. And you get the pressure with a little bit of help. <laughs> That's come up all right. Yeah, please with that. Meanwhile, Maxine is tackling another neglected element of Olivia's outdoor space, the barbecue. <laughs> My grill, what can I say to the barbecue? Um... <sighs> It's very rusty, it's very dirty, needs a lot of attention. Really, I've tried to manage it and clean it, but then I forgot that it's outside for a couple of months and now I feel like it's useless and I can't get rid of the rust anymore and therefore I can't really use it. Look at this. Most people, after leaving their barbecue in the garden for a year, tend to bin it. I'm going to show you exactly how to save it. Let me just rinse all the muck out first. I'm going to pour some water down it to get rid of all this mud. It's vital to clean your barbecue regularly. Food remnants and grease are a haven for bacteria and will often attract rodents. I mean, look, it's looking better already. Look at that. It's mud free at the minute. All right. I'm using wire wool, ball scourer, something that will get rid of rust and prevent rust as well. It's best to spray it in the open. And then you just scrub away. It's making a big difference already. It's smooth now, it's getting quite smooth. See, once you're, you're doing your scrubbing, you, you also got to rinse it to see how it's coming along. Right, okay, so, and we're gonna now see. Look at that. This is smooth. And this is still rough. Don't bin it, just clean it. It's cheaper to clean it. Because you're cleaning it with products that you probably have at home already anyway. And spray a nice bit of lubricant on this. And this will just latch onto the scourer. The household lubricant separates the bonds between the rust and the metal surface it is stuck to by penetrating the porous layer of rust to loosen it. But all it needs is a bit of elbow work. It will be like a new barbecue for you anyway. See, it doesn't matter that it stays orange, but at least we know now it's clean. And the bubbly rust is gone. Asher is making progress with the planters, but with time against them, he's got a handy tip to speed things up. So they're all different lengths right now, and I've left them oversized on purpose so I can cut them all in one go. Find it a bit easier and quicker that way. Yeah, useful tip whenever painting or treating timber that's fixed in place, always start at the top and work your way down. Because if it's gonna drip, it's not gonna drip on your finished work. But that's just a rule of thumb in the building game anyway. 
always start at the top of a property and work your way down. When you're painting out in the garden or outside, it's not a good idea to actually use paint because the water gets trapped behind it and it rots internally then and you look like you've got a nice white picket fence but it's really all hollow and not very nice. Wood preservatives can be oil-based, light organic solvents or water-based as Tommy's using here. Handily, they contribute colour as well as protection. So use a wood preservative in the garden and you get them in a great range of colours now. And to be quite honest, it's far easier to paint using a colour preservative than it is to use a standard oil-based paint. This wood preserver goes into the wood, seals it from the weather and probably doubles the life of the timber that you're coating up. So put this on first to seal it and then we apply two coats of colour. This coat of wood preserver is very fast drying and within an hour this should be ready to take the two top coats. Make sure you choose a wax-free wood preserver if you do want to paint over it with water-based paint. Maxine's also doing well with her jobs for the day. Look at this! There is a definite improvement here. It's still rusty, but the softer bits on the top have gone and the most important thing, it's clean, very clean. All I've got now are the grills to do. As food residue on a barbecue is likely to be burnt or congealed, simple soap and water won't be enough. Using the same lubricant spray, and of course, you know, this lubricant spray will clean this off and it will also give it a layer of protection. It should come up a treat. It's coming off brilliantly. Give it a bit of a rinse and see how it's doing so far. And look at that. <laughs> Though barbecue weather feels a distant memory today, the work can't stop. OK, so this is my last cut. Then I'll have all of these timber lengths cut perfectly straight and in line. That is the carcass fully built. I've then got to do the door. And on top, I'm going to create a nice little box area where she can grow her herbs, flowers. <laughs> Time for a quick break in the hope that the rain also pauses. Thank this you. is our official tea break. Yes. Which was forced upon us because of bucket loads of that wet stuff coming out of the sky. I know, yeah, right? <laughs> I know we tempted Providence this morning by saying, what a lovely day. Uh... <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Me. Well, it's a beautiful day. It's raining, it's pouring. The old, old man, man is snoring. <laughs> Well, I'm concerned because if it continues raining and it doesn't stop, we're not going to get this job finished. Yeah. I can still finish the plant pots as long as I'm under my gazebo. That can still get done. Well, we don't want him to get any wet. He's tall enough now. We can't <laughs> get him in the motor. True! <laughs> Look, I'm running low on water. Let me just tap oh, up. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go in now and continue. We've got to do the best we can for Olivia. She needs us to pull this out of the bag. She does, yes, yes. OK, see you later. See you later. Bye, bye. bye bye. Bye bye bye. Tommy has almost completed his outside furniture restoration. Well, it's a bit of a colour. Just a couple of hours ago, this was an algae covered table and it looked only useful as a part fill for a skip. <laughs> but it's surprising what you can do. So now I'm applying the colour preservative that you use in the garden. You're not restricted by having a wood finish just because it's made of wood. And I've decided that we're going to do this lovely colour. I call it lavender. It's called purple pansy. And what a lovely colour it is indeed. This is the girly side of coming out of me, isn't it? A wood preserver like this should give your outdoor furniture protection for around four years. 
choose a sunny day. Not a day like today. But unfortunately, we don't have that luxury. So we've got to work underneath this gazebo, keeping it as dry as possible and hoping it's going to dry to touch within a couple of hours. Ooh, <laughs> it still squeaks. Back in the dry, Maxine is taking on an important task for dog owners. <laughs> Lovely, squeaky clean. Toys harbour all sorts of bacteria from the animals' mouths, and they can even get a form of dog acne from playing with them. So if you don't want pup to look like a grumpy teenager, clean them fortnightly at a minimum. It's really good to put the washing up liquid on the brush rather than on the toy, because this washing up liquid will last for about two, three, four more toys. Whoa, look at that, wow. Rope toys are slightly different to plastic toys. This is because it's made of fibre and the fibres harbour germs. A good way of washing it is to wash it with soapy water and then for one minute put it in the microwave and the microwave action will kill all the germs. If you wash your dog toys in the bath or microwave, make sure you give them a good clean afterwards to get rid of any nasty smells and bacteria. outside well we have a problem it's been raining for the last hour and we're well behind and the worst thing you can be doing on a day when it's raining is painting of which we have lots of painting to do giving the preservative coat and then two coats of top coat allowing each one to dry properly but if we can get a little break the sun comes out and gives us another session. We might be just enough time to get this finished. Asher is feeling more buoyant. Hi, Asher. Maxine. What is this? Come on, Maxine. This is my little little secret. It's a planter box, and it does two jobs for the price of one. So inside, we've got plenty of storage. Yes. And then we're going to put a membrane on top, pour compost inside, and Olivia can plant her herbs, her flowers, all of that good stuff on top. Is it made of pallets? Not you're pallet. always using pallets. <laughs> you're you're close. Pallets galore. <laughs> you're close. This is softwood, but yes. it's not a pallet. So redwood and whitewood. Yes. But if you're using it outside, you've got to use preserver, otherwise it will rot away quick. You know what the best part is? Two of them. So this is my first one, and I'm making a second one as well. I can't believe it. That's brilliant. Doubling up, it's Maxine. A shed. Doubling up. Asher's second planter can help fix one of Olivia's pet hits. I have a lot of dog toys. They just fly around everywhere. But she just picks them out and just leaves. Obviously, <laughs> leaves them wherever, which is horrible. Uh, I know, but yeah, it just it's just messy to look at. I wouldn't really enjoy sitting out there and just, if the sun is out, just laying around there. I would be really, really grateful if we could get your help because she doesn't do anything besides eating and I need to clean after her and all that. I think I'm going to use this for the dog toys. <laughs> Perfect, thank you very much. OK, you can have this one for the dog toys and I want the other one for the garden hose and all the little tools. No problem. I'll share it with you. I'm just that type of guy, Maxie. <laughs> Thank you so much, my sweetheart. See ya. Finally, the whole team seems to be back on track. Sunshine. For how long? That's the question. And the clock is really ticking. If you've got a build-up of algae in your garden, the best thing to use to get rid of it is a scrubbing brush and soapy water. Remember, don't use bleachers, because bleach is not good for the environment. You must clean the affected area twice a year, or green algae will just keep coming back. 
Having restored the garden furniture, Tommy's repurposed some old wine boxes to solve one of Olivia's garden problems. Right, well, this is one of my brighter solutions today. What Olivia had here before was an old plastic chair and that was put on this wall to stop the dog from climbing over and getting into next door's garden. So I put these two boxes together, painted them, and now I'm going to plant them with some nice plants. So that will form the new barrier, but it will be a pretty barrier. With Olivia and Pepsi on their way home, the team need to pull out all the stops to get finished on time. Beautiful. So these hinges are called T-hinges. And these are the standard hinges that you would use with outdoor furniture. And over here, we have the top. What I want to do now is get the membrane inside, fill it up with compost. And we are good. If you come over. Move over a bit, bring it in a bit, leave it hanging on here, and I'll come round and get it. The boys can now arrange the gardens with a more welcoming space for Olivia to host parties. So, because that way, look from in there, We'll have the benches either side. Look at that. Remind me the name of this colour again. This is Tommy's Two-Tone. Tommy's Two-Tone. Yeah, that's you an alliteration there. <laughs> and a half. Tommy's Two-Tone. Tommy's Two-Tone. I like it. Just goes to show you how you can transform something that was past the sell by date and yeah. looked really mucky into something that's sort of quite quite uplifting and joyous. Literally splashed a load of colour in this garden. Yeah, it yeah. makes this garden look the way it should do. Yeah, Colourful. That's nice. Steady on. With the planters added. Put it on the angle. Oh look at that made to measure. Made to measure. It's like I've done it on purpose. Magic hands, you've done it again. Uh, I, mean, I don't like to brag, but you know. <laughs> I'm happy with Put that. the membrane in, plant it out, job done. There's just time for a few finishing touches. And they're done. So, with a limited budget and just one day, what have the team managed to pull off? Olivia needed a creative solution to make space in the living room for baking and working. And for Pepsi. The terrace was in real need of a refresh that protected it against the elements and was safe to walk on. And was a welcoming space so Olivia could invite friends over for a barbecue. After a long day, Maxine and Asher depart leaving Tommy behind to greet Olivia. Well, hello, Olivia. Very nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. We've had quite a day of it today here. The weather's led us a very merry dance, and hopefully you'll be very pleased with what we achieved in that time. I bet, I bet. The lounge was a combined work area, dog bed and baking station. Maxine's recipe for more space involved a smart storage solution and boxed, organised ingredients. Now, I know you work from home. Yes. And you're also a bit passionate about baking. Yes, that's correct. Yeah, and all from this section here, but it was a bit congested. Exactly, yes. So Maxine set about changing things a, a slight bit, tidying it all up, and now you've got this lovely workstation. Here's all your storage mm. on a slide, all marked up. So that all works, anything you want for your baking. And you've got the lovely plants and everything as a backdrop. This will hopefully inspire you for more clever baking. Definitely. I mean, it looks so <laughs> nice and tidy and clean. I like that. Let's go and see the bigger surprise. <laughs> wow. <laughs> The terrace was tired, treacherous underfoot and in dire need of some Tommy love. Tommy cleaned off all the green algae and repainted both the fence and the furniture to create a funky, fresh outside space. Olivia, do you remember what it looked like this morning <laughs> when you left? Yes, it was grim. 
I have to say, it was very untidy and also just dirty. <laughs> it was tired, that's what it was. It looked yeah. to me like the garden of a young professional who's too busy doing too many things. Yeah. And the things like the maintenance got left behind. Exactly, I've tried. I've tried every now and then on some spots, but yeah, I gave up quite quickly. Olivia, do you like your table and your benches? I have to say I have to get used to this colour combination, yeah, but this... it's definitely something new, something different. Well, this is, uh, this is very much the new hot choice on the block. Yeah. This is called Tommy's Two-Tone. <laughs> There were toys and gardening tools all over the terrace due to a lack of storage space. So Asha created a floral solution. Oh, I love these herbs. Asha, when he did these, for your oh. storage, for your gardening tools and your hose yeah. and everything, you put that in there as a big box and you've got a lovely oh, love herbal garden planted on the top. Yeah. And there's another one to match behind there. And in there we suggested that you put the your dog's toys yeah, yeah. so they're all uh, away nice <laughs> sorry i had to look so you've got some already in there yeah so far. yeah she has a lot of toys that's true <laughs> we cleaned everything down all this trellis has been coated up with a color preservative okay i'm just hoping that you really like it to make all the space more usable whereas it wasn't all usable before the barbecue was dirty and rusted from a lack of cleaning Maxine's made its summer party ready. The barbecue, this has been restored by Ooh. Maxine. She yeah. spent a lot of time on it, brought it all back for your weekend barbecue, That's if great, the weather yeah. permits. Fingers crossed, <laughs> fingers yeah. crossed, yeah. Definitely, I mean, I can see myself here in the summer having friends over, having a barbecue. We know that you had a chair here yes, to yes. stop the dog getting into your neighbour's garden. Yeah, that's so right. we decided to put something a little bit more salubrious, if you like. Mm -hmm. So we made up the, these are wine boxes <laughs> and we decided to put them together, paint them and then put some plants in there just to keep looks, the dog from looks, climbing next door. It looks great, this yeah. entire side. And, and, well, it's and all meant to, to pretty <laughs> up a little bit for you. Yes, it, it looks great. I bet Pepsi's going to love the area and like running around and just playing with her toys and even having her doggy friends over to play. And... I'm presuming that Pepsi is the dog. Yes, yes. I didn't <laughs> yes. know the dog's name. <laughs> yes, she is, yeah. Oh, bless her. And on that note, I shall leave you to relax and enjoy your new outside space. Thank you. <laughs> and I hope it gives you many, many uh, weekends of happiness. Thank you very much. Pleasure. <laughs> that was a tough one. The rain nearly did for us, but we persevered, and I'm glad we did, because it was successful, the outcome. Because Olivia actually loves it. And what more could you ask for? Not only have the team left Olivia and Pepsi a spruced up new space, they've also given them a leg up to a cleaner Ooh. and tidier life. Ooh.